Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video. We're Steve here back with round 6 of our F2 2021 Oscar Piastri career mode. Yesterday we head to the Sochi Autodrome where we've got 3 rounds to go of the campaign. 9 races and of course if you missed out on all the action from last weekend at the Temple of Speed of Monza I would highly, highly recommend going back and checking it out. Enzo Fittipaldi. He's been pretty much unstoppable all year, but last weekend was certainly his slip-up, and now we're just 12 points back in the Drivers' Championship there. Currently sat in P2, Lawson though not far behind. The rims and Delhi David Beckman just dropping back slightly at the moment, so it's looking like it's starting to form into just a three-horse race here. But as always though, if you aren't already and you do want to enjoy, please make sure you leave a like and get yourself subscribed to the channel. We're closing in on 36,000 subscribers. We're trying to hit 50k by the end of the year and if you could help us get one step closer it would be massively massively appreciated but yeah let's dive in then here to russia Right, well, here we are then on qualifying day here at the Sochi Autodrome. Fingers crossed we can keep it clean and tidy. You know, at the moment, 12 points between us, nine races to go of the year. The battle is certainly heating up between myself and Enzo Fittipaldi, and we cannot afford to let him start clawing points back here. Weather this weekend is looking pretty sunny and dry all weekend long there, apart from rain 10 minutes after qualifying's finished, so that's not going to make much of a difference. But let's just see then if we can try and get a lap hooked up here at Sochi. Fingers crossed we can keep it clean and tidy there and put this thing right up towards the front of the order. I think qualifying here is going to be very, very tightly bunched as we make the long, long run down towards turn one there. Gilly Samaya currently fastest. You absolutely love to see it. In towards the first corner. A little bit wide there. Having to attack the curbs a bit more than I want through turn two there, but luckily... The FI letting you get away with that. Turn 3 should be basically flat out. Taking a little bit of an early apex, but managed to hang on to it there as we tip it through turn 4. They're getting all over the curbing on the exit. You've really got to try and make this track as wide as possible. It's the gear through the next couple of corners. Got to be really, really careful of the sausage curbs pretty much between now, though, and the end of the lap because they can really upset the rhythm and the stability of an F2 car breaking just before the black boxes for a lot of these corners in sector two. Make sure you get the car back over to the left-hand side, break just before the 50. Oh, I'm taking way too much sausage curb there. That's gonna compromise our run out onto the back straightaway here. So we're gonna have to keep it really, really clean and tidy in the last few corners of the lap. Then we are still currently fastest, but I'm not sure it's gonna last for all too long as we head down in towards sector three, tip it in being really brave on the brakes there, trying to get the car rotated over the curbing or a little bit of back end wobble as we just try and keep it nice and tidy. This chicane is always horrible no matter what car you're racing in, but in towards the final few corners then of this qualifying lap, where is it gonna put us on the grid for the Sochi Russian Grand Prix there. One more corner to go. Tip it in. Attack the curbs. Up towards the line. It's going to be P2. Schwartzman sneaks it away at the line. The grid is all set for the race tomorrow. But before we go, let's quickly remind ourselves of our top three. Which are Schwartzman, Piastri and Guan Yu Zhou. The grid is set then. So that just leaves the race itself. Join us tomorrow where we'll be live with all the action. And until then, goodbye. Three one hundredths of a second there. But it is finally Robert Schwartzman, homeboy, out on top. He's had such an awful year so far for Prima. But he is finally on pole position. I'm sure he wouldn't have wanted to do it anywhere else. There's seven cars separated by a tenth of a second at the end of qualifying. There, Guan Yu Zhou just two thousandths. Behind myself. So yeah, Guan Yu Zhou and Robert Schwartzman, two of the biggest disappointments so far this year there. Jack Aitken in at P4 ahead of Armstrong there, one of our title rivals, and Bent Fiscal. Dan Tictum up inside the top 10, but I think for the first time this year there, and Lawson down in 10th place. But look at that, Enzo Fittipaldi, three tenths off pole, 18th place. We have now got a huge opportunity to take big, big points out of him this weekend there. Let's dive in here 
to sprint race number one. I've partnered up with the F1 store for 2022, the best place to buy Formula 1 merchandise. Currently, they have an incredible end-of-year sale on with plenty of 2021 lines available at up to 40% off with official merch available from every Formula 1 team. If you're interested, click the link at the top of the description or in the pinned comment down below to help support the channel. And here in Russia, today's race is about to start. We're at the Sochi Autodrome and the drivers on the grid are almost ready to begin. Join us as we enjoy today's Formula 2 event. The Sochi Autodrome is a 3.6 mile circuit encompassing venues built for Russia's 2014 Olympics. Close barriers will make overtaking difficult in places, but much of the track can be taken flat out. The fans definitely won't be left wanting when it comes to the spectacle of sheer speed. With me at Sochi for the Russian event is Davide Valsecki. This is a long and complex circuit. Davide, what are your thoughts heading into it? Hi, Alex. Yeah, you're right. This is still a very exciting circuit. Lot of winding turns and high-speed straights. The racing here should be extremely close from start to finish. I think we'll see a great race today and I can't wait to get underway. Right, well here we are then on the grid ready for round six of the year here from Sochi. Really, really excited to dive into this one today. We've got 11 laps ahead of us though. Weirdly enough, I thought it would be more here at Sochi, but we're not going to ask too many questions about that. But yeah, starting on the front row, Prima... Sorry, we're not on the front row, of course, because of the reverse grid. Uh, so yeah, Schwartzman will be just behind us, ready for the start, of course. We'll be on the front row, ready for the feature race, guaranteed here. But yeah, let's dive in then, starting from P9 on the grid here in Sochi. Waiting on those five red lights, and it's going to be lights out, and away we go. And actually hooked up a pretty decent start there as well. As David Beckman, as we head down in towards turn one there, Guan Yu Zhou already trying to sneak up the inside of Jack Aiken there. Where is our teammate Schwartzman? He's going to box us in in towards the first corner. We're just going to have to be really, really early on the brakes there. As all well. Schwartzman, clearly, yeah, very, very upset with how the year's gone. So he's just throwing everything at it this weekend there. As we head out the first couple of corners, around the outside of Guan Yu Zhou through turn three, around the outside of Schwartzman through turn three. Perhaps we're completely offline. We're going to have to try and get it rotated back over. And Schwartzman just about hangs on there, but round the outside of Guan Yu Zhou through turn three there. Left us with the inside into turn four, and I'll be pretty happy we hooked up that move off the start. But again, this weekend is still about just trying to focus on the gaps between myself, Armstrong, and Fittipaldi there. You can see Armstrong a couple of places up the road, but Schwartzman a good start, 10th to 8th. We've gone 9th to 9th there, and Guan Yu Zhou has lost, obviously, the places there from 8th down to 10th. It should have been the battle for the championship between us three. But yeah, it really just has not gone well, my Russian and Chinese compatriots here. But heading down the back straight, though, tucked into the slipstream of our teammate. Not 100% sure who is in the lead at the moment. So we're closing in a little bit on Schwartzman. Oh, locked up the rears there slightly. As we thought about sending it on our teammate, but ran in the final few corners then of lap one. You'd, you'd hope there'd be a little bit of team orders coming in from Framer here, but maybe now we've got a chance to really try and leapfrog ourselves back up into Teams Championship contention as well here. But in towards the final corners of lap one, a fairly undramatic first lap in the end. Of course, the massive run into T1 can be rather scary there, but Liam Lawson leads the way at the end of the first lap for high tech. Let's just see if we can try and challenge our teammate a bit more and push ourselves into the points. Oh, we got yellow flags out. Someone's got issues. Is it someone in front? I think it's someone behind again. Who is it going to be falling to the wayside then in this Grand Prix? I think it's Guan Yu Zhou. Yeah, it must be the UNI Virtuosi car there, unless he's just dropped a couple of places. No, Guan Yu Zhou out then of the Russian Grand Prix. That's going to promote David Beckman into sprint race two pole position. That poor old Guan Yu Zhou, his terrible year just goes worse and worse when he finally looked like he had some pace this weekend. It all goes up in a cloud of smoke. DRS, though, now enabled then in the Russian Grand Prix, but we're just dropping back a little bit behind our teammate Robert Schwartzman at the moment. Struggling a bit for pace, but then again, I think just everyone is so tightly bunched here around this circuit. So we take a bit too much curve through to turn one again that we're just trying to slowly get the car into the groove. 
Turn three is definitely not flat out though, with a full tank of fuel. Oh, we got more yellow flags out. What's going on again? Another car falling to the wayside here, and I think that's maybe um, Ralph Bosham. I want to say no. I think he's just had issues here. Is this another car off? What's going on in this race? There, I think that's Alessio Deleda potentially falling to the wayside, but many cars having issues early on here in the Russian Grand Prix. Perhaps the ladies just lost his front wing. Perhaps they came together. Yeah, not too sure what's going on down at the back. Unless he would lay that out, though, of the races. We just run a little bit wide through the final corner there. But Sato and Tictum trying to apply some pressure to the leader there as we go fastest. The fastest lap of the race. No idea quite how I managed that, but I guess we were at a little bit more clean air than a lot of people. That lap definitely didn't feel great, though, so I, I guess we'll take it. Everyone's still very much line astern early on then in this first sprint race of the weekend. No one really wants to take the gamble at the moment as we do make big gains on our teammate. Can we try and maybe get a run through the final couple of corners here? This is the problem with Sochi. You just can't stick close through these final twisty bits and then you can't do anything down the front straight unless you've got a huge tyre advantage. And of course that's not really ever going to happen in a Formula 2, but we're actually doing pretty well at the moment, all over the back of our teammate Schwartzman as we head in towards the final corner. Tip it in, attack the kerb there, and try not to get any wheel spin on the exit. Another fastest lap then of the day, so we have got pretty good pace at the moment there. He's going to activate the DRS there, tuck right under his gearbox as we head back down in towards Storm 1. Are we going to be able to get a send on our teammate there, homeboy Schwartzman? We're going to have a look to the inside, get it slowed down, squeeze him out. And we'll have that, thank you very much. Up into P8, up into the point. I don't like to do that sort of thing to our teammate too often, making risky moves. But we've got a driver's championship to play for. And he hasn't pulled his weight this year to mean we're not really within a good shot of the constructors. Team orders, multi-21. And that actually works because we're driver number two and one. One lap later, all over the back of Jack Aitken. We are now finally starting to get into the groove. There is another fastest lap. Keep this up. Five thousandths quicker than we did the lap before, so you can never argue we're not consistent on F1 2021. But I think we're running slightly lower aero than a lot of other cars this weekend because we are definitely gaining down the straight. As big, big send up the inside of Jack Aiken, and a carbon copy of the move we just did to our teammate there with a tiny bit more aggression. And we're now up at a P7 then of the race. Championship rival Mark Armstrong now the car just in front. Can we get in before the end here? We're only halfway through this race. There's definitely going to be opportunities. Oh, we got another car with issues. Bent Viscal, second weekend in a row, it looks like. Bent Viscal is going to be forced to retire. There, we got a little bit close for comfort as we head down the back straight there. But the poor man in his trident out then of this weekend's first race once more. They're just like we saw in Monza for him. What is it with Bent Viscal? And sprint race number ones. But that promotes me up into sixth place then of this race. Still within the range of Marcus Armstrong. As Tictum, still yet to score points this year if I remember correctly. Could be on for the race of his life so far. But I've got no idea what's going on with Marina Sato at the moment. Uh, sorry, with um, Ben Viscal even. Because he did pit and then has come back out and he's still going at the moment. So did he get like a puncture or something? Surely not. In six laps here. In an F2 race, it must have been a weird mechanical fault. But yeah, Ben Viscal now back out on the track. Maybe it was a DRS failure whilst it was open? I, I don't know. I think now as we head into the final four laps, though, of this race, we need Marino Sato to start trying to have a look for moves on Liam Lawson here. Try and bunch up this little pack of cars. Because although we're certainly at the back of this train now, it's going to be very, very difficult to try and make any moves. No idea why Jack Aitken and Schwartzman have fallen away so badly, but... We're going to take any opportunity we can get at the moment. We have to be quick but careful, though. There is still a lot at stake at this stage of the championship because now it could be Armstrong that becomes our main title rival, and he is still definitely battling at the front here. Little kick of understeer there as we locked up the front. But are we going to see Sato get a run on our race leader, Liam Lawson? There, big, big wobble again on the exit as we head onto the back straight. That's just how hard we're pushing at this stage of the day there. You can see the Trident is closing in on the high tech, but he just can't get close enough at the moment there. So you head now down into sector three, big, big lockup on the way in, but we might be able to do the up and under on the 
Damn's car. Oh, we're getting so, so close up the inside we go, though. You don't often see moves here, but we have pulled it off on Marcus Armstrong. And that was sort of a move that we accidentally set up for ourselves. They're just trying to use some different racing lines around this circuit. And now we're up at a P5 of the race. They're turning way too early, though, through the penultimate corner, through the final corner. We go once more. And now Dan Tictum. Yeah, now ahead of our big title rival, Mark Armstrong, but Dan Tictum still only there up the road. Again, though, Sato can't do anything into T1. Three laps to go. I think some of the AI is starting to struggle a bit more on their tyres here because I seem to be finding more and more grip over a lot of cars at the moment, all over the back of the Carlin. So we head down the back straight, and look at that. Dan Tictum really, really struggling there. Up the inside we go. We'll muscle our way through. Up now into P4 there, taking him by surprise. And that is exactly what we need to be doing late on in this race there. Teo Porcher, Marina Sato, and Liam Lawson now. The only cars in front of us as we've really sliced and diced our way through the field here. But it's feeling like at the moment, the F2 tyres are so odd. We seem to find more pace in them late on in a race there as we head through the final corner. Bent Viscal is now fastest lap away on some fresher, softer tyres there, but we still found three tenths on our PB that lap. Clearly, the fuel burn is much, much more powerful than the tyre wearers. Is Sato this time around going to be able to get a run? No, again. Looks just like Lawson is hanging on at the moment ahead of the Trident. Put this now all over the back of Teo Porchette as we head out onto the back straight for the penultimate time then in this race. Are we going to get any sort of run on the young yeah, Frenchman. On track, but officials aren't looking to push for a safety car right now. Just be careful. No idea what's going on behind us in this race, but look at that poor chair really, really struggling. Why do the F2 cars do this in towards Sector 3 there? Just breaking early, and again, that's going to be a pretty simple move up the inside there, but now just over one lap to go then of this race, and we've just got Lawson and Sato in front of us. Could we do the impossible from ninth on the grid? to potentially try and take home this race victory. We had a brilliant sprint race out in Monza where we were able to carve our way back through the field after a big, big mistake early on. And if anything, that's just given us so much confidence to push. Four seconds the gap to Schwartzman behind, but to be honest, I don't really care about that. Sato, one final time. He's now going to have a look for a move up the inside of Lawson there. They squeeze each other. In towards turn one. I locked the rears up behind and worried that I was potentially going to go back into Lawson there through turn one. Sato has to back out of it though this time round. Are we going to be able to get a run through turn three there? To the inside of the Trident we go. We're going to try and take the opportunity if we can to the inside. And we're now up into P2 then of this race is all coming together late on here. And now Liam Lawson is the only car between us and potential race victory. In the first sprint of the weekend here in Formula 2, Russia. Oh, big, big lockup at the rears again there. It kind of fires you in towards the apex there as we head through Sector 2, drifting the car around. Tyres now starting just to bleed a little bit more than they have done through a lot of this race. But, of course, Lawson is not going to have any DRS to defend himself here. We don't get the best run, though, out onto the back straightaway. But they're gaining. We're gaining there. You can see the road in logos getting bigger and bigger in front of us. As we head down the back straightaway here, Lawson, are we going to be close enough to go for a move? Not quite there, I don't think, but can we stick close through the final few corners then of this race? There's surely going to be nowhere now that we can try and look for a move on Liam Lawson there as we head in towards the final couple of corners of the race. Look at that, we found some grip. Are we going to be able to have a look to the inside of Lawson there? He leaves the door open for me. We get the car to the inside and final corners of this race then. Just keep it clean, keep it tidy through the final corner and we take it. Yes, you've done it. Well done. Well, what a drive that was to take the win for Bremer today. And Davide Valsecchi, give me your thoughts. How did they accomplish this result? Well, I'm not sure what we just saw, but one thing's for sure. Today's winner has certainly showed they have no fear battling it out on the track. And who can blame them? 
I don't think I've ever seen someone eat through the competition so quickly. Today's race was a sight to behold, and judging from the crowd's reaction, it went down well with the fans as well. It looks like it's time for the victory ceremony once again, as I can see the drivers beginning to make their way out for the celebrations. You can see it on their faces. It's another marvellous team win for Prima today. And now let's take a look at the driver's stand. And now a look at the team standings. Hitech GP moved to the top of the table. Meanwhile, Carlin moved up the table with another strong performance this weekend. After all this drama, you'll be mad not to join us for the next race. We hope to see you then. Take care. Well, there we are then, guys. The end of the first sprint race here from Sochi. And it is going to be the dub from ninth on the grid. Poor old Liam Lawson there. Robbed in the final couple of corners. I've got no idea where we found that pace. In the dying stages of the race there. Just everyone else seemed to really start to struggle on their tyres. And we just kept them running that little bit longer. Perhaps by not pushing so hard early on. Opened up that strategy for us there. But Lawson P2 ahead of Sato. Weird to see Sato attacking other cars for it. Rather than defending uh, an entire race long there. With Teo chair less than a second away in P4 there. Tictum and Carlin. Like I said I think that's Tictum's first points of the year. We'll have a look in just a moment. Ahead of Armstrong, Jack Aitken and Schwartzman there. With David Beckman and Yuri Vips will be our front row for sprint race number two. But where on earth did Enzo Fittipaldi finish that race there? P16. In the end there, we're just Delader and Guan Yu Zhou both not making it to the checkered flag. And that means, for the first time this year, Oscar Piastri leads the way. 155, uh, sorry, 150 points, 5 clear of Enzo Fittipaldi there. Liam Lawson just fifth, uh, 14 points back though at the moment. He's still definitely within a shot at this title as well. The table chair ahead of Richard Vashore. Sato jumps back past his teammate and Alessio Delader a bit further down the order there. Schwartzman with some good points jumps Guillaume Samaya and Jack Aitken. And that means teams-wise, we are definitely now back within a chance at this as well there. Hitech, nine points clear of MP Motorsport, 15 points clear of Prima, and 22 ahead of Charouz and ART are not out of this just yet either. It is still so much to play for. Thank you all so much for watching this video, though. If you have enjoyed, do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed as well. And yeah, we'll be back very, very soon with Sprint Race number two. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.